In previous classes, we have seen how to model the kinematics of a differential drive robot and how to identify the model parameters. With this simplified representation of the input-output relation of the robot, how can we go about designing a controller such that the system behaves as we want? Suppose, as control engineers, that we are given a brick wall and we are asked to make it fly. What could be an infallible approach? Naturally, to divide the brick wall by an identical brick wall and then multiply it by an airplane. This joke captures the essence of a feed-forward control, an open-loop control strategy based on plant inversion. When our model of the system is very good, we can theoretically change wall bricks into airplanes. In practice, model uncertainty and other real-world nuisances such as delay in signals prevent us from solving the control problem so easily. The historically most popular control algorithm is the so-called Proportional Integrative Derivative, or PID, control. It is a feedback control approach that can be used even when no model of the plant is available. With its first modern application in 1911 and theoretical formalization in 1922, PID control is used in the great majority of industrial control applications, and it is surely the first approach in controlling a system. In PID, the command signal is made of the linear combination of three signals. The tracking error, its integral, and its derivative. The PID design problem is to determine the three coefficients of the linear combination so to achieve satisfactory performance. PID control is not the most effective control algorithm. It will not yield the best performance, nor robustness, nor it will be the most economical to use or be optimal in any sense. But PID is intuitive to implement, it can be tuned online while the system is operating, and it just works well enough in a broad variety of practical applications. PID control can even be implemented model-free, without making assumptions on the input-output behavior of the control plant, as long as it is possible to measure the controlled variable. The three components of PID control are functions of the tracking error signal. This error signal is obtained by subtracting the measured output of the system from a reference signal. An example reference signal for a robot that has to drive straight down the road might be zero heading and a constant lateral position to keep it always at the center of the lane. To close the loop, we could measure the angular rate of the DuckyBot's wheels through the encoders, or determine its pose in the lane by using a camera when driving in town. The P part of a PID controller is a signal that is proportional to the magnitude of the error, that tries to move the system in the direction that is opposite to the error. The further away we are from the center of the lane, the harder we steered towards it. As the P coefficient increases, the robot will reach the goal sooner. The response speed of the closed loop will increase, and the tracking accuracy at steady state increase too. Typically, though, the robot will overshoot the reference position, and in an attempt to compensate, it will start to oscillate around the reference. Moreover, the effects of noise in the measurements will be amplified by proportional feedback. The D term is proportional to the rate of change, or the derivative, of the error. It allows the robot to predict what the error will be in the near future. A derivative control action tries, therefore, to avoid the overshooting, hence damping the system, and increasing overall the stability. On the other hand, though, it slows down the system response, and unfortunately, it makes the system very sensitive to measurement noise, so it needs to be used with care. The I part of the PID control is proportional to the integral over time of the tracking error. It allows the controller to account for the past and detect potential biases in the system. The integral control action tries to move the response in order to reduce these detected biases, providing, for example, a perfect convergence to a constant reference signal at steady state. As the I coefficient increases, 
the response will become more oscillatory, but the sensitivity to noise will not change. Solving the PID problem systematically requires gaining additional insight in the mathematics of the feedback loop. But this insight is not strictly necessary. PID coefficients can be tuned online while the system is operating. There are several heuristic techniques to model free PID design, and although they might function as a rule of thumb, manual tweaking of the coefficients is the praxis. PID is a tremendously successful approach to controlling a broad variety of systems in the real world and can be quickly implemented and tuned to obtain a satisfactory performance. Go give it a try.